what a start to the season for the Army Black Knights. Army marches in for the first time here at home. Pitch pass for your side. 10 yard by five. Touchdown, Army. Campbell to cover. Ackerman takes it down. And we are live at the stadium in Baltimore. The Army Navy game. Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Touchdown, Army. It's over. For the first time since 2001, our soldiers will watch as their colleagues get to sing second. Anderson. He's found a way to make plays. Ever. Certain backs are fast. Certain backs are shifty. This will be the fifth all-time meeting. Evans breaks free. Touchdown, Touchdown Fordham. Time for the try for two. Bradshaw can't get there. The Fordham faithful have seen the Rams pull off the victory. Rams, Black Knights, next. September 1st, and it means the beginning of the season for Jeff Monk and Army. That Texas flag in the middle carried by Texas native Cordero Davis, thinking of those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Army coming off an eight-win season. The core of cadets is fired up. You should be, too, for Army football in the debut edition here tonight as the Black Knights welcome in from the Bronx, the Rams of Fordham. A pleasure and an honor to be with you alongside my broadcast partner, Jay Feely, John Schriffen on the field. My name is Ben Holden. Jay, I'm going to use a golf analogy to talk about Army season coming up in 2017. After last year, one of their best years in 20 years, they have to validate this year, right? That's right. I like it. They do have to validate. They got to take the next step in the progression. Jeff Munkin has done a great job of building this program, getting bigger, getting stronger. They finally beat Navy. They go to a bowl game, win a bowl game. Now they have bigger aspirations, win the CIC Cup, get into the top 25. To do that, it all starts tonight against Fordham. It certainly does. A big football game, and Ahmad Bradshaw has become now a senior, and he's the unquestioned leader of this team, Jay. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He's a powerful physical runner not a really breakaway speed type runner but he's physical and he's smart if you run the triple option you have to take in so many things decipher them and make good decisions and he is like you said the unquestioned leader on this army team now product of chicago and he's ready to go this fordham team came in two years ago and beat army in his first career start they had Kevin Anderson at quarterback. They've got him there tonight. They also have the top running back in the FCS who, pun intended, everyone's chasing Chase Edmonds. Well, you can chase him. It's just hard to catch him. <laughs> Such a spectacular back, an all-around back with breakaway speed, elusiveness, balance, toughness, power. Guy's got over 6,000 already all-purpose yards. Just a spectacular running back. Looking forward to seeing him play here tonight. Third member of our team, as I mentioned, John Schriffen down at field level. John, tell us about some key guys missing from Army's lineup tonight. Well, Ben, the preseason has not been kind to the Army football roster. A bunch of guys Coach Munkin wanted to be able to depend on will not be able to play tonight. Let's take a look at that list. Back at quarterback Chris Carter, he is out academically ineligible for the entire year. Starting cornerback Elijah Riley, he is out indefinitely due to academics. And a key wide receiver, Jeff Ajekum, he is gone not just for this game, suspended for next week against Buffalo for violating team rules. Now, the offensive line also banged up. Mike Johnson, he's done for the year with a torn ACL. Brett Toth, Bryce Holland, they've been banged up, limited in practice. But I talked to Coach Munkin before the game. They were a game time decision. He said they will start, but he's going to keep a close eye on them. Ben. Thank you, John. And the core of cadets, 4,400 strong, have filed into Mikey Stadium. Army will kick it away. Fordham, they won the toss. They are going to receive Chase Edmonds, 22, and Dylan Maven, number eight, are back deep. And a good kickoff that goes nine yards into the end zone. It'll be a first and ten for Fordham from their own 25-yard line. Chick-fil-A lineup says we look at Fordham's offense, Jay, and Kevin Anderson, a fifth-year guy. His first start came two years ago on opening night on this field. Well, a natural leader. Doesn't have a huge arm, but he makes really good decisions. Run this RPO offense very well and knows where to go with the ball. Get it to your playmaker, Chase Edmonds. He's the guy, is Edmonds. Anderson started his college career in this end of the field. If you remember, Jay, and I'm sure you do, 
the first play of the game offensively. They turn the ball over. And it was recovered by Army great Andrew King. Play clock has expired. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Referee tonight, it's an ACC crew as they always are here at Mikey Stadium, is Matt Overton. Not exactly the start for him, wanted much like two years ago. Yes. So Anderson, who began his college career at Marshall, is behind Rakeem Cato, transferred, and he's a good one leading this team. Floats a ball out there, incomplete, was looking for Corey Cattle. There is a flag on the play. You're going to see ineligible man downfield. Jeff Munkin. Let's take a look here, Jay, from they're up top. Trying, yeah, they're trying to throw a screen right away. The Army took it away. So they roll out. Ineligible and throw it. receiver downfield. Offense number 79. Penalty is declined. Result of the play: second down. So Dominic Lombard, the guilty party there. So two plays and Fordham's done nothing yet. Anderson takes a glance to the sideline and another whistle and another flag. Looks like a false start. False start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Second down. So that's the right guard. And that's the freshman who's starting because the starter Solano was injured. You got Jake Trotman in there. You're looking at second and 20 to begin the game. From the 15, Andrew Briner mentioned his Fordham program. He's in his second year. He's 33 years. Another penalty on Fordham. They moved again on that left side, Jay. That looked like Coyle, the left tackle, 78. Ball start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Indeed, it was on Anthony Coyle. There's Briner, their head coach, and it's time for our Chick-fil-A starting lineup. Jay, who do you highlight amongst this group? Well, they're going to throw the one. They have to be balanced. We talked about Chase Edmonds a lot. He's the special running back. And Austin Longy is a receiver, number three. Has breakaway speed. They're going to try to get the ball to him. Second and 25. They throw to the near sideline. And the catch is made by Jonathan Lumley, a 6'4 target they really like. Brings up a third and long. The Army defense, Jay, who are you highlighting tonight? Alex Ackerman, you lose King, you lose Tim. This guy has got to step up. He had a great year last year. Started in the first game against Temple. Couple of sacks. Kept getting stronger. He's bigger. They're going to call on him a lot to lead that defense. For them, 44.7 last year on third down conversions. They need 19. They don't even get that. Broken up, coming over to break that up. The pass was intended for Chase Edmonds. And the secondary stepping up there as they broke that up. Gibson came over to break it up. Last year, Chase Edmonds had six catches for 140 yards or two years ago against Army. They're keying on him, coming out of the backfield, not allowing him to get loose. A great start for the Army Black Knights. So they've got a freshman punter and Andrew Mebison. John Trainer back in midfield. So the kind of start Army wanted. Four penalties, they decline one. Trainer with a fair catch just over the 45. So a short field for Munkin and his guys to go to work for their first offensive series of 2017. Our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. <laughs> and he touched on him in the open. There is the senior out of Chicago, Ahmad Bradshaw. Yeah, he's going to lead this team. They, they really don't have a backup. They lost Carter. They lost oh, McGoo. Yeah. So it's imperative for Ahmad Bradshaw to stay healthy, to make good decisions, and not turn the ball over. Darnell Wolfolk 
the fullback. Wolfolk gets it, drags a defender about three yards. That was Max Roberts who went for the ride. He made the tackle and and look at the rest of the Army starters in our Chick-fil-A lineup. So you like there? Well, John Trainer, the running back number six, he only had 53 yards rushing last year, was injured a lot. But Fordham's going to try and stop the fullback, and they want him to go east and west. So Trainer is the guy who should get this ball a lot, have opportunities. Also, look for him in the seam to get a couple catches. Sad his moments over the years here as Trainer. Here goes Wolf. for Army, a 39-yard run for Wolfolk. Triple option football starts with the fullback then. You got to have fullback success. Last year, one of the big keys for Army was getting the fullback going. Wolfolk, Davidson, they were able to do that. Fordham knows that's where they're going to start. That's where they're going to try to go. Army just was successful. And blocking that up, getting a big hole for Wolfhart. Bradshaw the holder, Blake Wilson on to tack on the point after him. Perfect right down the middle. A minute and a half into this game, Jay, a 7-0 lead for Army. Bradshaw giving to the fullback, Wolfhart. Big hole, take it into the end zone, Army up seven. First full weekend of the college football season. We come to you tonight from Mikey Stadium. Army on top 7-0 after this run by Darnell Wolfolk, Jay. Well, it's something you're going to see all night. Going to the fullback, you'll see number seven, Noah Fitzgerald, looking inside. John Bowes, the defense coordinator, said he's got to come downhill, not to stop there. He gets caught looking, doesn't come down and hit the fullback. Boom, Wolfolk hits the hole, and then he's gone. What Fordham can't allow them to do, Ben, is get fullback success. If you have fullback success, it opens everything up for the triple option offense. That's the st start that Jeff Munkin loves to see right there. Outstanding start. Game two years ago here. Mentioned that forced fumble by Army. The King recovered on the first drive. Joe Walker had a touchdown. So a, a similar start in that sense is Fordham Committed four penalties and then punted. Army got great field position and bang, they take it in. Two play drive and they're in the end zone. Different Army team now. What yeah. they did last year, finding fullback success, building upon that success, beating Navy, winning the bowl game. A lot of confidence now on this Army team. Best season Army's had in 20 years. It was a big one. Chase Edmonds says, nope, I'm not going to take that one. And He'll go and get in with the offensive group. First installment this year of Jay's Extra Points. What do you have for us? Well, when you look at it, stop the fullback. That's what we said. They didn't do it on the first drive. You have to make them go east and west. Fordham's got to be balanced on offense. You have a great running back, but you have to throw the ball as well to keep that Army defense playing uh, downhill. Don't let Edmonds beat you. You have to take the ball out of Edmonds' hands. Make the quarterback beat you. Ball security if you're at Army on offense. Four penalties on the drive. They took three to climb the other. Here's Anderson, second series. Edmonds finds a seam, trying to get outside. Good pursuit there as they got him just over the 30-yard line. Jalen McClinton leading the charge on Chase Edmonds. And this is what he does so well. Nice little counter play. Come inside. Look at the vision to get back outside and hit the hole. But a good job by Army rallying to the ball. And you see Edmonds fumble the ball out of bounce there. That's something that Army has put a priority on, trying to strip the ball and get it out. Here is Anderson on the move. They get in there. They get rid of the ball, though, to Fordham. And they're going to go backwards are the Rams. Scott Washley in there to make the stop. Veteran guy is Washley. No more Jeremy Timp. No more King of Queens, Andrew King. That's over 200 tackles. Gone in the middle for Army. Good to see there. Yeah, they're going to need the young guys that are talented but inexperienced to step up and play big throughout this year. Third and eight for Fordham. Blue on to the near side. Anderson under pressure. Flames it, and he overthrows the target. That was Lumley. So it brings up fourth down. So two series, and Kevin Anderson and Fordham stymied by Army so far. 
Kevin Anderson and Chase Edmonds have a lot of confidence. They're comfortable. They sat in our meetings very close. Yes. But look, they look out of sorts so far at the beginning of this game. First punt from a freshman out of Warsaw, Indiana, Andrew Mevis. 28 yards. Stands inside of the 15. Pressure coming. Got it away. Trainer says get away from it. Took an Army bounce. And again, Army will have very good field position around the 46-yard line. That one only a 27-yard punt. Ahmad Bradshaw will lead the troops back onto the field when we come back after this. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. By Golden Corral, your choice rules. And by those that live like a pro, GMC. Beautiful West Point evening. Usually we say afternoon, but a Friday evening tilt. Jay Feely, John Schiff, and all of our great crew. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us. Second possession here for Army Jay. Big possession for Fordham defensively. Bradshaw keeps saying he'll pick up a short game there. Yeah, it's imperative for John Bowes, the defensive coordinator for Fordham, and his defense to get this game settled down, not allow Army, even though they have good field position, to go down the field and score again, or this game could get away from them in a hurry. Uh, Bradshaw, one of their co-captains. He averaged four and a half yards of rush last year at eight touchdowns. Trainer goes in motion instead. They go up to Wolfolk again. They've got something going there tonight. He gets the first down of the 42. Fitzgerald on the stop. Here's the Fordham defense. Who stands out here for you, Jay? Yeah, the free safety, Caleb Ham, number 31. Had a big game two years ago. He's going to be hitting Bradshaw a lot tonight. Spying on him. Nice job there by the front of Fordham. That'll result in a minimal loss. They might put him back at the line. Fitzgerald on the stop. Fitzgerald, number seven. We talked about him on the touchdown run by Wilco. Yeah. Not being aggressive and getting downhill. Watch him shoot the gap here, get into the backfield, and make the tackle. That's what he didn't do on the touchdown. John Bowes, you mentioned him, the defensive coordinator, told us the other day, he said, hey, he's the smartest of our linebackers. And exactly what you said, we need him to play downhill. So they give him the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, Davidson's the fullback. Here's Bradshaw. Here's the pitch. It's into the hands of Jordan Asbury. He can fly. Flag on the play. And he's wiped out inside of the 10. There's a penalty marker back at the 18-yard line, though. Antonio Jackson forced him out. We'll have to check the flag first. Holding. Offense. Number 88. 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Cam. Harrison guilty, the freshman wide out, negates a gain of 35. Correction, after penalty, right there. It is the first down, first and 10. That's the hold by the freshman Harrison on a good run by Asbury. Just holds on to that block just too long. When you get, when they get on the outside of your body, outside of the frame, you just gotta push and let go. That's something Harrison will learn. It took what was a great run and turned it into a good run, but there's a first down nonetheless. Yeah. Ball spotted at the 30-yard line. Gain of 12 on the play. Davidson behind Bradshaw. They fake it. Here goes Bradshaw to the near side. Jackson came in to help out. Finishing on the tackle also was Dylan Maben, one of their corners. Got him down loaded, Maben. Second and two, eight-yard pickup for Bradshaw. What a difference from when we were here for that game two years ago. We've referenced when he came in that day, he he didn't want anything to do with talking with us. Now, no, he, owns, now he owns the room. <laughs> Andy Davidson right up the gut. Barrels his way to the 15, a first down. Stop made down low by Ty Green of Fordham. Veteran offensive line, Holland, Houghton, Kurz, Toth, they're having their way right now with that Fordham defense, creating holes, creating seams. If Davidson keeps his feet there, he scores. 
Huge year he had last year. He started the year on a tremendous roll, gain of seven. One of our Armed Forces football proudly supported by GMC. First and ten, Army in the red zone. Wolfolk, they didn't fool him that time, Jay. They clogged him up short gain, but big number 55 in there. Their grad student, one of their captains, Manny Adieye, he was in there to make the stop. He's a big boy. He's been plagued by injuries, but he's probably the most physical defensive lineman, has the most talent. They're going to need him to play big today to stop the fullback. Get penetration by your D-line and your linebackers. Make Army go out wide to their slot backs. Yeah, he is a key. Only three starters back in their front seven. Here's Bradshaw with it. There's the pitch. Trainer's got rolling and blocking. Trainer takes it in. He leans in for the second Army touchdown here in 2017. A 13-yard run for the senior out of New Jersey, Trainer. Two possessions and two quick drives as Wilson's on to try and tack on the point after out of the hole to Bradshaw. An aspiring astronaut is Blake Wilson. He wants to put this ball into orbit. <laughs> <laughs> well said. He did just that. So early on, 8.41 to go in the opening quarter. Looking good on the Black Knights up 14-0. Back here at Mikey, and you're going to see number 31, Caleb Hamler, in a single high safety look. He's in the middle. He's got to get all the way over here to hit him on Bradshaw. There's a little bit of traffic. You can't get all the way over there, so they get screwed up on their numbers. And then look at all this space for Trainer. We talked about in the open that he would get the ball on the outside in space. Wide receivers downfield blocking for Army. Look at this right here. Great block out front, giving Trainer the opportunity to get into the end zone. And you know, Army up two scores early. Ford had better wake up. They better. That was Kevin Waits, a freshman out of Manor, Texas. Sharp new helmets. They won't look so sharp by the end of the game. They'll all be scratched and paint will be peeled off by the end of this game. And so far, Army has run 10 plays for 108 as Edmonds awaits the kick. Fordham has run six plays for eight yards. Not what they're accustomed to. Edmonds says, I'm going to take a knee, and he does. And now while we got an opportunity to take a look at our GMC game changer and its Fordham quarterback, Kevin Anderson, brought to us tonight by GMC. That was his first career start two years ago to start the season here along the banks of the Hudson, Jay. Yeah, it was a pretty good start. A big upset win for an FCS team over an FBS team in Army. Kevin Anderson, he told us, though, I had no idea what I was doing in that game. I didn't know why I was doing it. I was looking to the sideline, getting the call from Joe Moorhead, their former head coach, yeah. and just running the play. Now he understands the offense. See what they do here. Edmonds trying to hop through there. He picked up a little more than two on the run, did Edmonds, who has 25 career 100-yard games. His career rushing average per game, a skosh under 143 per game. And a three, they say, on that first down run. Fake to Edmonds. They'll go into the open space instead. They throw it near side, but it was bounced in there by Anderson to Corey Cattle. Incomplete. Third and long coming up. It's obvious Jay Bateman and his defensive staff are going to focus on Chase Edmonds. We knew that. Fordham knew they were going to do that. So they got to come out and they got to soften this defense up, hitting some passes underneath, taking a shot. They haven't been able to do that yet. They're 0 for 2 on the Rams on third down to this point in the game. And Anderson's 1 for 5, Jay, for 6 yards so far. Watch number 3, Austin Longy in the slot. Right on the hash there. Anderson looks his way, now looks up, goes the other way, catch is made, first down, they go to the tight end, Isaiah Seawright, 6'4 and 260, a big young lad, they moved the sticks, they needed that, did Fordham. Certainly right, Ben, they needed some momentum, they needed to get 
something going positively on offense. They really like Seawright. At 12 on that play. Very high on him. Edmonds, what can he do? With this, a stiff arm, another one. And he gets it out close to midfield. Where are they going to spot him out? Looks like they're going to get him the first down. He's got it. Was forced out by England and Sharp, a gain of 11. It's that RPO offense. You get lined up, look at what the defensive gimmick is giving you. Anderson looks back to the sideline. Head coach Andrew Breiner calling the plays, telling him what to do. So Ryan England there, if you're a fan of Army, you know he's worn number 20 in the last few years, not wearing number eight this year. This is Longy, and Army sniffed that out. Short gain, and Longy paid the price. Over there was Washley, Scott Washley. State High School 55-meter champ trying to get the speed through the ball. Coming around the corner, but Army does a great job defensively at the point of attack. Ryan England fighting. He's not a big guy, but he fought through two of them to stop that play. Second and eight. Anderson on the run. Has to get rid of it, and he could not complete it. It was off the turf here at Mikey as they look down there to Corey Cattle. So what's Briner do is he looks at his cards and his charts. Well, you got third and eight on the 40th. So he's not thinking, get a first down here. He's thinking, I need to get six yards to get myself in fourth and two or three to go for it on fourth down. And one of three are the Rams so far on third down. And that's the progression. They don't think, I need a first down here. They're like, all right, I got two times down here I'm gonna try and get three or four of those yards right here and get myself in a manageable fourth down play clock and they've got to take a timeout Briner has to take his first time out of the first game first timeout for Fordham 30 second timeout so 642 to play in the opening quarter and I was going to say to you, there's more to your story, what you were talking about. For more on that, let's go down to field level with John Triffin. Well, Ben, we are seeing a shift in how coaches are calling plays these days. They're getting further away from calling plays based on instinct, and they're basing it more off of math and probability. What that means is they've hired a service called Championship Analytics, and both Army and Ford have hired this company. Before the game, the company will send them a 50-page book based off of all their previous plays and tendencies, and they'll give them the best probability for success. So let me give you an example of that. So if they have a drive and it's fourth and two, say on the 30, they'll look at the book and they'll have a probability of whether they should go for it or not. It's fascinating. It's sweeping across the college and at big schools like LSU, Georgia, Arkansas, they're all starting to use it then. They are, both are using it here tonight. We'll continue to talk about that right now. A big third and eight, they need the 40 through the Rams. Anderson can't get away, and Aukerman took him down. He led him in sacks and tackles for loss last year. The bulked up Alex Aukerman, a big play on defense, a loss of seven. Aukerman put on 40 pounds. You can see the strength here as he comes running right through the block of Chase Edmonds. No chance to block him. Getting into the backfield, getting his first sack, and a big play for that Army defense. No chance to go for it on fourth down when it's fourth and 15. Jay Bateman told us yesterday, he said he's like trying to block a dump truck. <laughs> he's always good for about five quarts a meeting. Fair catch by Trainer. So a good punt there by Mavis. Gets it inside of the 20. Much better than the first two efforts from him. 37 on that punt. And here's the senior, Ackerman. Get the job done. A big play forcing the punt. We'll be back right after this. There's Alex Aukerman in the middle, made that sack. And the senior. 556 to play in this opening quarter. Army on top 14-0. Tuesday night at 7:30 Eastern. Follow four unique voices as they share their role in last year's historic Army-Navy game. It saw the Black Knights finally end the midshipmen's 14-year streak of dominance. It's four sides of the story. Duty, honor, football, only on CBS Sports Network. And day number 17 there, Ahmad Bradshaw, a big focus of that show, as he should be. Had the yeah. winning touchdown. I can't wait to watch it. I was part of the kicker. We yeah. released that earlier. It was a really cool documentary. That one's going to be special. They did an awesome job with those. I loved your set where you did the interview, by the way. Here goes Ahmad Bradshaw. 
He's still running out near midfield. A big gain for the senior from Chicago on first down. Noah Fitzgerald forced him out. Gain of 37. Again, a problem with Fitz. 31. Caleb Ham, he's supposed to hit Bradshaw. He gets caught up in the mix in a big hole. And when it's paint by numbers defense and you have one guy with the responsibility, he's got to get there and make the play. Army goes fast. Darnell Wolfolk. Look at him run with power and authority. Third possession of the game for Army. The first two were very good. A 16 yard gain. Well, they haven't thrown a pass yet. They haven't had to. They're just running the ball, Will, inside, outside, whether it's the fullback, Bradshaw keeping it, trainer on the pitch. They've been able to do pretty much whatever they want. Fordham is reeling right now defensively. Arnell Wolfolk, 600 yards last season, five and a half per carry. Wolfolk gets it again. Takes it inside of the 25-yard line. Does the product of New York State. Max Roberts on the tackle. A couple hundred yard games for Wolfolk last season. It's huge in the bowl game. The bowl game went over North Texas, two touchdowns and 119 on the ground in that game. Davidson's now in at fullback behind Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Fordham saying they came away with a ball. Of course they are. We'll have to unpile the bodies. And well, the ball's right there in the hands of number 98 for Fordham's defense. That is DeAndre Carter. And he comes away with a first turnover of the game, Jay Feely. The ruling on the field was a fumble and recovery. That ball's out. I agree. Play is under review. They're going to look at it and look to see if Bradshaw's knees were down. You're going to see. This angle's probably a little harder. But with the other angle, you're going to see that right knee and the left knee in the air when the ball gets knocked out. Maven comes in. Here you go. Watch the right knee. The left knee's on Maven, so that's not down. The right knee right here is not down, and the ball is knocked out by Maven right there. That's a fumble, a huge play, a must play for that Fordham defense. They had to find a way to get a stop. Army's running up and down the field, looking at going in to go up three scores. Maven comes in and gets a huge knock. For now, here's the thing, Ben. Last year, 26 turnovers for that Fordham defense. They weren't great from a yards perspective, but they were excellent, first in the Patriot League, in creating and forcing turnovers. They were great in the turnover ratio department. As a result, we look again. You see Maven there, as Jay said, on the left. So right now, after review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Fordham. Yep, right call was made, no question. Yeah, a good job yep. by the officials going in, seeing it, not wasting a lot of time, making the call coming out. Last year, 23 forced fumbles, 13 recovered for that Fordham defense. None bigger than right there. They needed that one to start this season. Seventh in the FCS in turnover margin, and Anderson's got some weapons. Jay, do you think they? Launch one deep here. What do you think they do offensively? Right, you're trying to run your offense. I think they're going to try to stay within their offense, continue to do what they do, which is run the RPO offense, and take what the defense gives you. Out of the shotgun, Anderson hands off. Edmonds trying to get free. Army's really had his number so far. Cam Jones, who stepped into that corner spot, the boundary corner spot for Elijah Riley who's out because of academic issues for this game tonight. Just a gain of two. Edmonds, five carries for 17 so far. Anderson, they are all over him. That Army defense swarming to the football. Cole Christensen involved in a play along with McClintock. Some confusion there between Edmonds and Anderson. Anderson can run the ball. He had 255 yards rushing last year. Loss of one, third and nine. Inside of three and a half to go in the quarter. A lot of real estate. Anderson. Took a shot, he's going to be short. It'll bring up fourth and a couple. McClinton made the stop. 
So these are the situations where you go and you look at the book and you look at the analytics and yes. you determine what does it say? What are your probabilities? You're looking at fourth and one against this Army defense that was stout against the run last year. You can see they're going for it. You would think maybe they wouldn't go for it, but the book says to go for it, and Briner's going to go for it. I snap got away into the hands of Evans. He's in trouble, and he can't get out of there. And the book was wrong that time. It backfired. The snap was high, and Army's got the ball. One of the things that analytics can't account for is human error. Exactly. You have a snap over the head of Anderson. The, the numbers might say you have a 70% chance of getting a fourth to one, so go for it. Human error enters the element. That's what football is all about. Big mistake by the center there for Fordham. Snaps it over Anderson's head. Chase Edmonds can't do anything with it, and Army gets a big stop. And, you know, the fumble now doesn't mean anything. Now you lost even field position. Yes. Hartman, who had some issues a couple of years ago as a freshman snapping the ball here, has another one there. It might be very costly. Wolf up. You lean on him. Green was the first to get to him, number 57, as they take it down to the 13-yard line. So a good pickup on first down for Munkins guys. And it's Andrew Briner there in the background of that shot. Head coach, 33 years old. He walked up to me at practice the other day. I said, what are you, about 25? <laughs> he does look young. He laughed. He said, oh, I'm a little bit older than that. Gain of five on that run. Trainer goes in motion. Nice job. They get Wolfel, but they got the wrong guy as they went to Bradshaw there. He faked a very good fake. One of the things that Bradshaw said he wanted to get better on this year was speed in the mesh. That means the connection between quarterback and fullback, getting the ball in and being able to pull it out, that's exactly what he did there. Good job turning a negative play into a positive. Third and a yard. Or did he? Nope, there looks like they're saying he's down inside of the one. But he gets the first down, and what a start Darnell Wolfolk has had in this game. Robert saved the touchdown. Watch his leg just continue the to churn. That the runner was short of the goal line is under review. That's close. The left knee goes down first. So when the left knee hits, it's where is the ball when that left knee hits the ground? There's the left knee. That ball looks to be short. It's tough from that angle. Ugh. Remember, they called it short on the field. So it has to be definitive to overturn this and to call it a touchdown. But a great job by Wolfolk just continuing to churn his legs, fight and fight, scrap for more yards. His ninth carry of the game for 89 yards. And a touchdown already. That is a very difficult one to make, in my opinion. Andrew Panucci is the replay official up on press row. He's reaching out, and that left knee comes out right as the ball's about to break the plane. I think they're going to leave it. I don't think there's definitive evidence yeah. to say that the ball had crossed the plane before that knee touched the ground. I will agree with you on that. Wolfo, Davidson, doing After their review, jobs. the ruling on the field stands. First down. Here's the verdict for Matt Overton, our referee tonight. 65 seconds to go. Army needs to move the ball. Pretty much the length of the ball. You see there, a good look at it. On first and goal upcoming when they break the huddle. Short march.
match indeed to cap off the drive. But Bradshaw makes it 20 to nothing. The point after pending and a less than a minute remaining in the opening quarter. His 14th career rushing touchdown for the senior from Chicago. Late stages of the opening quarter here at Mikey Stadium with Jay Feely, John Schiff, and all of our crew. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us here. First of two games tonight here on our network. Boston College, Northern Illinois follows us from DeKalb. One yard touchdown. Extending the lead on Chase Edmonds and Fordham by Mont Bradshaw. 21-0. Nick Schrag handling the kickoffs tonight. Situation there, Jay. You can tell that Fordham feels yeah. this game is at a point where it's a necessity for them to do something. Edmonds is not normally the kickoff returner. They put him back there. He only had two returns last year. Right. Trying to create a spark, trying to find something that will get them back in this game. He basically went to the coach and said, Hey, it's my senior year. Let me, you know, be out as much as I can. Kind of how that went down. Big possession here. Kevin Anderson, Chase Edmonds, five carries, 17 yards. Anderson hit as he threw. He gets it out near side. Catch is made by Corey Castle. Jalen Sharp there on the stop. Clock continues to move. A gain of seven. It'll be second and third. Second and three, I should say. Officially two. Down. Quarter has expired. Army Black Knights with a 21 0 lead on top of the Rams of Fordham. Army off a great season in 2016. It'll look like they missed a beat. Leading 21 0 here after one. You're watching college football from Mikey Stadium on CBS Sports Network. Second quarter, Army on top of Fordham 21-0 with Jay Feely, John Triff, and our producer tonight, Bruce Clark, our director, Warren Pick. My name is Ben Holden. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching tonight. There's the story, Jay, of the opening quarter offensively. 188 yards to 34. They both ran the same amount of plays, 18. You can see that. Army's been effective. Fordham, not so much. Yeah, not so much. This team's got a lot of firepower. First play of the second quarter. Edmonds puts his head down, ran right into Christensen. Jay Bateman had high praise for Christensen. And I mean, I don't know about you on your game charts. I literally ran out of room on this guy. I mean, just the, the facts and information that things he's done. And you keep giving him the ball. You don't go away from your yeah. game plan. He's going to pop one. He's got that kind of talent. He really does. and receiving two years ago in this matchup here on opening night. They fake to him, stays in a block. He can't block Ackerman, though. And down goes Anderson. They get him just over the 15. John Voigt, another senior up front. They got the look they wanted. They were going to take a shot deep, but Anderson just doesn't have time. They go with the play action, and Ackerman just runs right through Edmonds again. Creating havoc. That's just a bad matchup. Chase Edmonds against Alex Ackerman is a bad matchup for Fordham. He's a dump truck. Here's a pass. He's sent off the lovely, and Cam Jones got over there. 
Forcing him out of bounds quickly, so it's going to bring up a key third down from the 22-yard line. Elijah Riley, who took over last season at cornerback for the late Brandon Jackson. They've still got the numbers 28 on the field at the 28-yard line. He's out. Cam Jones doing a good job tonight. Flag flies and will halt things here momentarily. We got Antsy, false start. False start. Offense, number three. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That was Longy. He was lined up in the slot. Ryan England was lined up covering him, and he came on a safety blitz off the corner. For some reason, Longy moved. He was going to be uncovered on that play as well. Fourth penalty for 20 yards. Third and 11 for Fordham. We need the 28 I just referenced. And Brandon Jackson's number is on the sideline. Anderson. He's going to be close. Sharp was there. Good play by Cattle, catching the ball, knowing where he had to get to, fighting and extending the ball to get the first down. There he is, fighting, extending the ball. So a much needed conversion there. The sophomore comes through. You hear that all the way up here. Cam Jones in on the tackle there, number 20. A blue sticker on the back of those Army helmets tonight for the 3rd Infantry Division. They wear one every week on their helmets. Thanks to all those great folks in the 3rd Infantry. For <laughs> Anderson near the first on stick. They're going to spot him. Passed it by a yard. It was Cattle again that made the catch, Jay. Gain of eight. Forces football, probably supported by Golden Corral. Anderson trying to orchestrate a drive downfield here in the early goings at quarter number two. Longy can't get away. Wrapped up and dropped. Nice play made by Ryan England. There's not enough superlatives to tell you what Jay <laughs> yeah. Bateman says about Ryan England. Yep. Smartest player on the field. A guy he cannot seven. live without. The captain back there. <laughs> the new linebackers, you got to make the calls because Timp and King, they say, don't even make him. Just look back to Ryan. He'll tell you what to do. That's right. The only thing that's changed about him, as I mentioned, is number. He's 20 in the last couple of years. Number eight this year. Anderson on second down. Look for C right, and it's covered over there once again by the aforementioned number eight, Ryan England. He missed a chance there. Anderson did to go to Lumley. He was on the bottom of the screen. It'll be a third down and seven. Here's England a couple plays back. Solid textbook tackle. 53 tackles last year. A couple interceptions. 146 in his career. 146 tackles. But even more than what he physically does, he gets everybody lined up, knows the defense as well as Jay Bateman. Anderson, seven out of 13, completes that one. That'll be a first down as they go to big Lumley again, 6-4. He's not as big as Faison Odom, who they had a couple of years ago, but he's a big target. They move the chains again. Yeah, and he's a matchup problem. 6-4, as you said, 187 pounds. Got a couple inches on each of the cornerbacks for Army. Shield, first and ten. Anderson, a fake, got a man, and it's incomplete. They're going to call P.I., though. Cattle, the intended target. Jalen Sharp was the young man That's in an coverage. Defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Army was in zone coverage. Sharp trying to recover. You can see he doesn't look for the ball. He's got to turn and find the ball and look for the ball. He puts his hands up. That's an easy call for the official. Anytime you come in there, Ben, and you don't turn and find the ball, you're almost always going to get a pass interference call. 
15 yard penalty for that one. 10 plays, 42 yards for Fordham on this drive, their best so far. Anderson trying to get away, can't. And get him from behind, it was John Voigt, the senior. And out of St. Louis, Missouri is Voigt. And a lot of football up front, one of their captains this year. Well deserved, he's been a good one for them the previous three years. His career interception came against Fordham in his career in 2014. Second and nine. Anderson directing traffic, brings it, catch made at the 10. It's Lumley again, they got something going, Jay. It'll be first down and goal to go for Fordham. That was just ad-libbing by Kevin Anderson. Coming out, not having what they wanted originally, rolling, buying time in the pocket, finding Lumley, who did a good job coming back to the ball, making the catch. 26-yard pickup. Andrew Briner, Fordham head coach and offensive coordinator there looking on. Looking for Austin Longy, could not hang on to it, was covered by Ryan England. It's a good throw by Anderson, probably a catch that Longy should have made. Watch this good run, very fast, quick out of his breaks, he's open, there's the ball. You gotta come down with that, help your quarterback and make a great catch, he wasn't able to do it. Our man is on. Second and goal now. 14th play of the drive. Bunch formation on both sides here. Anderson, 17th throw of the game. It's complete. And they'll get him at the seven yard line. It was Lumley once again who's got a handful of grabs already in this game. Yeah, but you're, you're comfortable with Lumley catching the ball underneath. Oh, yeah. If you're Army, you don't want him to go over the top looking for fades. You want, if you're Fordham, I'm, I'm calling the plays. I want Pat or Longy to get those plays. This is for sure four down territory here for Fordham. Approaching seven minutes on the drive. This will be the 15th play of the drive. by that Army defense. It was Gibby Gibson that got in there, James Gibson. McClintock, I beg your pardon. Jalen McClinton there, so fourth and goal. Interesting that they're gonna kick it. I thought with the analytics, it would yeah. told them for sure to go for it on fourth down. field goal attempt, running it back for a touchdown. Jalen Sharp will go catch his wind on the sideline after that. Junior out of Garland, Texas with a wide out last year's Wilson. And the hold of Bradshaw. Army. And Sharp looking is that Mercedes logo there. They look real good. 28 nothing here, Jay. Passabini with his first field goal attempt. Comes out low, Army gets the block. Takes it back for a touchdown. 28-0, Black Knights. Nice. 28-0 with 7.40 to go in the second. Jalen Sharp, the 75-yard return. Andrew McClain, the senior out of Colorado, blocked it. Number 58 in the center of your screen. 
They just go right over the left ta right tackle, double team him, push him back. McLean gets the block. They run it back for a touchdown. Jalen Sharp moved from wide receiver last year to corner. Yes. Tough, tough, tough first career field goal yeah. attempt for Fasabini. It was a low kick, but they got a lot of penetration as well. And there is a warrior right there. Got the war paint on. McLean, the senior out of Louisville, Colorado, suburban Denver. Let this start from Munkins, guys, Jay. About as good as he could have hoped for. <laughs> They're doing everything right right now. This Fordham team is explosive, though. They can get back in this game. Yep. Boots it away, and it stays in bounds. Evans was hoping that it would bounce out. It didn't. There's a flag down back at the end of the Army bench down below us. As our referee. Matt Overton. Appreciate it. So it looks like they're going to make the legal procedure. A member of the kicking team went out of bounds, came back in, five yard penalty, re kick. There you go. You know what Chase Edmonds should have done there when that ball hits and it dies right on the sidelines if he runs up puts a foot out of bounds and reaches back in with his foot out of bounds right here if it puts his foot out of bounds and touches the ball it's dead it's a penalty it's a kick out of bounds same thing as if you kicked it out of bounds they get the ball at the 35 yard line but I like anytime you have a penalty on a punt or a kickoff and you can make them repunt it as long as you didn't have a huge return. I always like that. It's an advantage for the return team because the coverage team just ran all the way down. They sprinted down the field. They're tired. They got to go back and reset. This is a chance for Fordham to get a big return and to gash Army to get back in this game. Now you mentioned Edmonds and he only returned two kicks last year, but in all the reading we both did, one of the things I was fascinated by with him was the first time he ever stepped foot on a varsity football field, he took a kick back for a touchdown. <laughs> and the coaches said, I think yeah, we, we have something, something here. Yeah, exactly. And there's so many great storylines and moments in his career. That, that really was what started it for Chase Edmonds. There's Schrag. He's done a good job. He's got three touchbacks already tonight. That wasn't a good kick. But you got to be careful here. He's lining up and going to kick it to Edmonds again, it looks like. Edmonds back there with Maven. Chase Edmonds from the six. Spins, gets away, took a shot. And he's dropped finally at the 20 yard line. Good pursuit by the kick coverage team there. Relentless pursuit. That's what you want to see for your kick coverage unit. Jeff Munkin has got to be pleased. Went through a lot of efforts this offseason to try to make these special teams better. They struggled. It cost them games last year. It really did. A couple of games. Tonight's first and ten line is brought to us by Golden Corral. It's going to be a first and ten here for Fordham. We'll begin from the 21-yard line, trailing 28 nothing. We're more than halfway through this second quarter. 18 team last year was Army, so too was Florida. Ball delivered. And then they get out to the 27-yard line on the pitch and catch there. Anderson going to Corey Cattle. This is a Fordham offense that averaged 40 points a game, led the Patriot League. Almost 500 yards offense. They're used to moving the ball down the field and scoring points, and it's been a struggle. Going back five years, they've scored 40 or more 24 times. There's a pass that he catch that. He caught it. That's Lumley. Excellent catch wow. by Lumley. Ran a slant. It was covered well. 
And Anderson put this ball where only Lumley could catch it, but there was not a big window. Lumley oh. caught it almost one-handed up on his shoulder. Gain of 14, Cam Jones did everything he could. Lumley just made a spectacular play. Anderson, cattle catch. Good pick up there for him to the 47. Mike Reynolds on the tackle, so I suppose they haven't been able to get Edmonds going. The pass game's worked. And you know that B Jay Bateman was going to focus on taking away yeah. Chase Edmonds. So you knew coming in, if you were Andrew Bryant and Fordham, they were going to have to throw the ball to be successful, and now you're behind by 28. Pick up a six on that last play. Six minutes remaining in a rapidly moving first half. Anderson, Seawright's got it, another first down. Anderson's pass complete to Seawright. Takes it to the 46 the of Army, and Ryan England, another stop for him, but it's a first down for him. Nice catch by the big tight end there. There's Jay Bateman, defensive coordinator, one of the Gordon, best in the country. The Jay Bateman did an awesome job last year, total defense. They were fourth in the nation. Defense was sixth in the nation, too. Edmonds trying to get free. They're chasing him. They are making him earn every single yard and step he gets Edmonds tonight. Jalen McClintock forced him out. Jay Bateman said, we have to stop the run, and we got to bring a lot of pressure. You see Jalen McClinton, number seven, eyes on Edmonds, coming up, making the play. And one to the 45. Second and one, eight rushes for 20 yards for Chase Edmonds, over 5,000 yards in his career, nearly 1,800 last year, and they've kept him in check to this point. But a long way to go. Anderson, man, not open, knocked away as Gibson was on the coverage there as they looked to his counterpart, number two, Corey Cattle. Cattle did a really good job of just getting a hand on it, deflecting it, so Gibson could get an interception. Third down and nine. Gibson, their boundary safety. He's a junior now. Third and nine on the 45. Again, analytics is going to tell you, you don't have to get the first down here. Get four or five, put yourself in position so that you can go for it on fourth down. Fordham, three of eight on third down. I wonder what Vince Lombardi would do here. <laughs> He's tied to both these schools. Anderson, some room, oh, can't get away. Great Anderson open field stop by Jalen McClinton there. Gain of four, so they need five. Here's a look back. See the big hole, but quickly recovered. Jalen McClinton comes out, makes a nice open field tackle. Fourth and five, they're going for it. As you said, Jay, they likely would. 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions. Anderson, easy toss, they get it. The book was right that time. They made the play, they get it to Seawright, who, like Lumley, has size, and he's made big catches. Nautical, the tackle after a gain of 11. 6'4", 242 pounds, good hands. They really like him. I mean. Faison Odom, their, their, their tight end, yeah. was with the Steelers at camp this year. Seawright started over him at the end of the year. Yeah, who was 6'8". Well, he's still 6'8", but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's shrinking yet in life. First and 10 for Fordham. Anderson fires. Nice throw, good catch, Longy. He took a shot. He's slow to get up, a beautiful catch by Austin Longy, and you hope he's all right. He took one heck of a lick, a gain of 24. Reynolds was in on that hit. They tend to Longy. Take a quick timeout here at Mikey Stadium, late in quarter number two. Eight stages of this second quarter. Army on top, 28 nothing. Good look at the core of cadets and coming up on the Ram halftime report. Dana Jacobson, Houston Nutt, and Christian Fourier will get you caught up on all the action in college football opening weekend. They'll also preview the Boston College and Northern Illinois game, which is following us. Tune in at 
Halftime for the Ram Halftime Report. I wonder if Christian will still be in those pants he had on last week like MC Hammer. Did you see that? <laughs> that was pretty funny. He's kind of a fashionista in his own mind. <laughs> Six-yard run for Edmonds. He found the corner and the Fordham faithful that made the short trip up from the Bronx. Excited for the first time tonight. Look at Edmonds. Here comes Kenneth Brins at number 56. He's their most athletic linebacker. Jay Bayman talks about his athleticism all the time, and he can't hang with Edmonds. And that's what's special. There really wasn't a lot there. He got around the corner, dove, and got a much-needed touchdown for Fordham. Here's Fasabetti. is blocked. The young man has had a rough go of it. So Chase Edmonds, his daughter Avery, watching her dad take one in for the first score for Fordham tonight. 3.13 to play until halftime. Army on top. 28-6 now. It's time now for our view of the court brought to you by MCOR. The core is always ready to put on a show in front of that camera. Chase Edmonds capping off a 10 play drive. 63rd career rushing touchdown. Here's the block, Jay, on the point after. Same two guys here going right through, right over the guard. They were on the tackle last time. They go over the guard, double team. Really nothing the, the kicker can do there. Oyatuga gets in there, gets his hand up, gets a block. They got to figure out. How to stop the double team because Army's just running right through, whether it's over the tackle, over the guard. They're just double teaming and blasting right through there. So Army looking to get their hands on the football. They've had no plays from scrimmage in this quarter, but they have seven points on the block. Sharp on the return. Field goal attempt. And they took it back sharp, did 75 yards, so hard to believe with 3.05. This is usually what Army does to other teams. They bleed the clock. Well, I think they're going to continue to bleed it, but I think yeah. Brent Davis is going to take a shot here uh, on one of these. He hasn't thrown a pass yet. Watch for a play action, double move. And if they don't get that, they'll continue. There's Brent Davis. We always love talking to him. He's got to be really happy with his offensive execution so far. Darnell Wolfolk, who's been outstanding. He'll be behind Ahmad Bradshaw. Trainer comes in motion. Bradshaw with it. Keeps it. He's got a ton of room. Got a block. Cuts back inside. Ahmad Bradshaw into the open field. Can he take it in? Bradshaw dives and scores. Ahmad Bradshaw with a highlight reel run. 71 yards. Davis doesn't need to take a shot <laughs> when his offensive line is just dominating like they are. Ahmad Bradshaw didn't get touched until he was 40 yards down the field. Bradshaw, he's been the holder for some years. 71 yard touchdown, yeah, three years. Low snap, and now Bradshaw, what's he gonna do? Throws it, nearly caught. Off the fingertips there of Zach Somm, one of their tight ends. Jay, the touchdown run from Bradshaw. Just the quarterback keeper comes around the corner. Huge hole. Bradshaw, there's where he first gets touched. 40 yards downfield, 71 yards to the house. <laughs> 34 to 6 now. Army on top with. 248 remaining in this first half. Army senior defensive lineman, the young man you saw there, co-captain John Voigt is tonight's Mercedes-Benz player profile and some highlights in his career. And he's clearly a leader on that defensive front. Here were his thoughts about the defense here in 2017. 
Our team expectations coming up this year, I think, are like any teams, and that's to expect to win every game. I think it really kind of pumped us up, knowing that we can we can get even better. It's just a different mentality, getting after the quarterback, great playmakers, the jack attack, and the two outside linebackers with Princeton and Aukerman. They just do a great job getting after the quarterback. I know we're going to continue that this year. Incredibly tough young man, plays every play, hardly ever comes out of the game for a defensive lineman. That's pretty special. Jay Bateman loves him. Would like to get him some more rushes. <laughs> Boy, he would like to see that too. Sure he would. <laughs> Wants to go after the quarterback. That's right. What army, one play on offense. 71 yard run for Bradshaw. They've got two touchdowns in the corner. Six. That was Maven on the return there. Good job by Nautical and company getting downfield on the stop. Tonight's first and ten line is being brought to you by Golden Corral. 2.42 left. Yep. You're on your own 23 yard line. You got two timeouts. Two minute offense here. You got a couple of quick guys, Longy and Cattle, that you can get the ball to. Lumley, you can take a shot to. If they're not there, you can check down to Edmonds. I think this is a good offense with it right here. I think Florida can move the ball, get downfield, try to score before half. Anderson 16 of 27 for 157 through the air. See what they do. Play clock is down. They get the snap away. Anderson, far side throw, catches made out there. Andrew Prince haven't called his name yet tonight, but he makes the catch and they move the sticks. Great start to that drive, 14-yard gain. You get a first down, you get out of bounds, stop the clock. 27th play of the game that Fordham has run from scrimmage. The Rams do have two timeouts. Anderson trying to avoid the rush. Got away twice. Still on the run. Fires. And they've given him the catch at the 40. Let's get down. Field level to John Schiffen for an update. John. Well, you guys remember that last drive that Fordham had. Austin Long, he took a huge hit at 5'8", 150. He is one tough customer. Only got the wind knocked out of him after the medical staff of Fordham looked him over. They gave him his helmet back, and he is good to go to come back into the game. Thanks, John. That's great news. Good to hear. Call he and Cattle the Smurfs. <laughs> Undersized, but they are tough and they can play. Anderson steps up, gets rid of it. Reeled in, Edmonds. Chase Edmonds, he's going to get a first down for Fordham to midfield. Man, you're, what a you're play. grinning over there. I am. I mean, that, <laughs> it, it's only a 10 yard game, but it was spectacular. Watch, it's a one handed catch. He brings it in, quickly then jumps in to attack mode. A lot of pressure on Anderson. Army's getting after him, not letting him be comfortable in the pocket. Inside of a minute and a half, now 85 seconds to play in the half. Four, I'm looking for six on this drive. You can be sure of that. They need it. Lovely, another catch. He just shined the first down, Jay. Here was the Edmonds catch. Anderson stepping up, just one hand, reaches out, grabs it, and then just how quick he gets into his moves and gets upfield, gets the first down. And then it took four guys to get him down. Second the yard. Guys in a little bit of a hurry here, Ben. I mean, there's 50 seconds, you got enough time, two timeouts, but you want to get all the way down the field and score a touchdown. They've spent a lot of time here. About 10 seconds they spent. Pressure, Brinson. Spectacular grab by Corey Cattle, but he couldn't reel it in with one mint. Oh, everybody watches Odell Beckham. They want to try and do it. <laughs> You're you right. saw him get up with a little smile on his face because he knew he almost had a highlight reel play. That would have been on every five foot nine. He maybe needed to be about five foot ten to get that one. <laughs> would have been on every highlight show in America, maybe Canada too, for that matter. Third in the yard. Edmonds trying to get away. He can't. Christensen. He chased down Chase Edmonds that time. As good as you can do it. 
You don't see that a lot. Now it's fourth down. The play clock's running. 20 seconds. They should have used a timeout already. You got two timeouts. Play right. clock's still running down to 14. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they didn't call timeout. It's fourth down. You need to get this play. Yeah, that's not good management of the clock. Now they take one. I think Jeff Munkin First took charge one. timeout for Army. Yeah. Wow. 30 second timeout. You're right. I think he wanted to be sure that his defense was set, but you wasted 12, 13 seconds there. If you're Ford of not calling a timeout, you have two of them. You let it run down all the way to eight seconds. So with eight seconds, you got what? You take a... Well, here's the problem. What you do you tried do? a field goal, you got it blocked. It ran, ran back for a touchdown. That's out of the equation. You came back, you tried an extra point, that got blocked. So you're not comfortable at all kicking the ball. Right. So I think you're going to try to get down to the 30-yard line and maybe to 30, 25-yard line and take a shot at the end zone. Yeah. I don't know that they'll kick it here, even if they get to the 25, 20-yard line. So Monken's guys getting their guidance, huddle up on the field. It's Andrew Briner, Pennsylvania product. Jonathan Lumley. 13 to the far side of the field. Uh, the first down markers. That's lovely. I'd take a shot to him. Throw it up. Maybe get pass interference or let him catch a ball down the sideline. Fourth and two. Anderson brings it near side. Prince has got it. So he gets out of bounds. He was forced out by Gibson. So you got two seconds and one shot at the end zone, Jay. Now they're going to use their timeout. Yeah. They should have used before. Timeout they should have. 30 second timeout. Gain of 13. Really, on this drive, they've wasted about 25 seconds. They have. Interesting decision. And they weren't in a hurry. They, you know, right. they could have been in a hurry yeah. getting up to the line. Interesting decision here, though, because yeah. you know you can go out, you can kick a 47-yard field goal, but we've already talked about the problems they've had blocking and not getting those kicks off. So I think they're going to take a shot to the end zone. We'll get the ball in the second half. So Anderson, 21 of 30 for 205. Andrew Briner, head coach and offensive coordinator, they've got the play called. Lumley, bo Lumley bottom of the screen. That's him at the bottom. He's your 6 4 receiver. Trips to the top. And another stoppage. Army takes another timeout. Second charge timeout. Army. 30 second timeout. So they call that a Kodak timeout. And what that means is you're taking a picture of the offense. You wait, you let them get lined up, you take a picture, you see defensively, you know, what they're going to try to do on offense. You call the timeout, now you're going to go in there and adjust. That'll be interesting to see if Andrew Briner and the Fordham staff, if they decide to go with the play they liked or they decide to change it now that Army's got to look at it. Just two seconds left in the half. Got an SEC versus Conference USA doubleheader coming your way tomorrow, starting with Kentucky taking on Southern Miss, presented by the Home Depot at 4 Eastern. And at 8, it's an in-state rivalry as Vanderbilt's all-time leading rusher, Ralph Webb. And the Commodores travel to Middle Tennessee to face the Blue Raiders, presented by Geico on CBS Sports Network. Anderson and the offense back on. Monken's defense, they're back on. Cheerleaders staying in shape, doing push-ups. Lumley still at the bottom of the screen. They flip the tight end, brought Seawright to the other side of the formation. Could be the final play of the half. Anderson. Fireworks went off. Play clock time is expired, and he ran around. It'll just be a statistic there as yardage as Army. Jay looked great in that first half, leading 34 to 6 at half, and they'll get the ball to begin half number two. Got to be honest, surprise. I thought Fordham would give this Army team trouble. Veteran quarterback, an unbelievable running back, but Army has been up to the challenge, getting after it in the first half. Some of the sights here at Army, they're great. End of the first half with the score. Army 34, Fordham 6. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network.
is a beautiful West Point Friday night, opening night for Army as they welcomed in Fordham. They're on top 34 to 6. Welcome up to our broadcast position alongside my broadcast partner, Jay Feely. John Triffin will join us momentarily on the field. My name is Ben Holden. Jay, good and bad for Army in that first half. A lot more good than bad. Yeah, there wasn't much bad yeah. at all. I mean, they did everything right. They yeah. ran the ball well. They played good defense. They even played well on special teams, which they haven't done in three years. So if you're Army and Jeff Munkin, you're thrilled with what you did in that first half. No question about it. Ahmad Bradshaw. He had a big first half run of the ball, so did Wolfolk. Well, you're going to see 31, Caleb Ham getting chipped. And because of that, he can't get to a Matt Bradshaw. That's his responsibility. When you're playing defense in this kind of system, it's one-to-one. -one, you have responsibilities. Ham isn't able to get there, make the play. Bradshaw gets a big run. You're going to see it again right here. Middle of your screen. There's Ham. He's got to get all the way over. His responsibility is Mod Bradshaw. He can't get there. They get a chip. They get a block. Boom, Bradshaw's gone. When you're playing defense and it's paint by numbers and you have one guy assigned to the quarterback, he's got to get there. I think Brent Davis has done a good job of looking at John Bowes when he was in Bucknell, yeah. understanding what he did well a couple years ago when they played there when he was the defensive coordinator, and then taking advantage of that. So Army gets the football to begin the third quarter. Leading 34-6. to six. And the ball came off with a whistle. Had blown. They say it's down. Jalen Sharp, the return down to John Triffin for some updates from the coaches. John. Well, first from Army's head coach, Munkin, he told me he's really happy with the defensive job they've done on Chase Edmonds, limiting his touches, only 10 touches for 24 yards. But he wasn't happy defensively with the way they ended that half. He felt like they really let off the gas pedal. They were missing some of their assignments, and because they were out of position, it allowed the quarterback, Kevin Anderson, to scramble and keep some of those drives alive. As for Fordham, Coach told his team at the half, look, we got shocked at the start, and the mistakes are the mistakes. Now we've got to play better ball. In order to do that, we've got to change the play call a little bit. Some for us. Thank you, John. They might want to tackle him on Bradshaw here to get him out of bounds. All the way down to the 31 yard line. Jesse Bramble forced him out, but a huge chunk. Picked up for Bradshaw right there, a gain of 40, Jay. Well, we just talked about it. You have to get on Bradshaw. If you're the free safety and you have Bradshaw as your responsibility, you know you think he's going to go outside when he doesn't give it to the fullback. Brent Davis throws a little wrinkle, has Bradshaw follow the fullback. Boom, another chunk play. Eight rushes, 168 for Bradshaw, and two touchdowns. Up the gut they go, powering forward. Line continuing to force forward and back that was Darnell Wolfolk on the carry. He had a big first half did Wolfolk rushed nine times for 89 yards and a touchdown. As Andrew Briner looks on at his team wondering if there's an answer to stop this Army offense. So far no. He's shocked right now. I know John Bowes their defensive coordinator. He's shocked as well. Had a lot of success in 2015 when he was at Bucknell. Army won that game 21-14. to use then. Bradshaw looking to put it into the end zone. The intended target was Trainer. On the coverage was Antonio Jackson. Third and four coming up. First pass attempt of the game for Army. Taking a shot, trying to catch the defense sleeping, looking at Trainer down the field. Pretty good defense there for Antonio Jackson, number five on Fordham. Senior product he is. Third and four for Army. Army one of one on third down. Make it two of two as Bradshaw calls his own number as he totes the pigskin down to the 16-yard line where they're going to spot him. It was James Biggs Frazier on the tackle. And there pick up. Sixth time these teams have met. They've all been here at Mikey Stadium. Interesting, 31, Caleb Ham, the free safety. First team all Patriot League isn't in the game at free safety. Key for Fordham as you've touched on more than once. That was Andy Davidson with a rock there. 
Big year from Andy, the converted linebacker last season. First game they had their opener last year, Army, it was at Temple. Had north of 100 yards in that game. Two carries for nine yards. Last year he had almost a thousand yards and a dozen touchdowns to lead the team in the rushing department there. Back shot. Pitched it. Asbury. Good job there as Jackson made the tackle. They read that well. Late decision by Bradshaw to pitch that ball. Dangerous. With a 34 to 6 lead, I'm sure Jeff Munkin doesn't want him taking chances with ball security. One of your extra points tonight is critical every week for this offense, really for any offense. Wolfolk and Bradshaw are in the backfield. Two of two on third down. Bradshaw looking to the air again. Too high. It'll bring up fourth down. This is where analytics comes in for Jeff Buckin. He's looking to the book, looking at what it says to do, what the percentages are. Sean on Wilson. I don't know how much you stray away from that when you're leading by what they are in 28. Well, you want to get your kicker some experience now. Yeah. Particulars on Wilson last year. Did not have a good year. Had a really good spring. He's been much better this year. 30-yard attempt. He looked good there, Jake. You're going to need him. They lost the game last year to Buffalo because he missed a kick. Big time for Britt Blake Wilson to come in, make that field goal, put Army up 37-6. to Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ram Trucks, proven to last. By Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. And by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Those were some pictures of the man the Super Bowl trophy is named after. Late great Vince Lombardi was an offensive lineman at Fordham, part of the legendary seven blocks of granite, was also an assistant coach here under Red Blake. They don't make them like him anymore, do they? They don't. My grandfather coached for a long time in college. He used to have dinner with Vince Lombardi, told me a lot of stories about him. Tom Landry also an assistant here. Bill Parcells was up here as an assistant. Of course, Mike Krzyzewski. And Bob Knight were here at points and times in their lives. So 37 to 6 after a 30 yard field goal from Blake Wilson. Eight plays, 58 yards, took 318. Bradshaw had the big play, a 40 yard run. He's got a career high on the ground tonight. You got a veteran quarterback in Kevin Anderson. You got one of the best running backs in Chase Edmonds. You got to sit out and say, we need you to get us back in the game. It's got to be the two of you. Anderson. Edmonds. They are all over him. There were five guys within five yards of him there. Christensen led the charge. You know, Jay Bateman told us something interesting. He said, when you play a heavy RPO offense, you can dictate what they do. You outnumber them in the run, and you make them go to where you want them to go. He's had a lot of success doing that tonight. Defense was among the most improved in all of college football last year. Edmonds, 11 for 27 on the ground. Here comes the pressure to get in. Anderson goes down. It was Voigt that got in there and took him down. There's an injured. Fordham player down. We'll get to that momentarily. That's the left guard Trotman who got injured. Oof. That's where pressure came from initially. And because Anderson couldn't get rid of the ball, Boyd was able to tackle him from behind. Trotman was playing tonight because the guy in front of him, Solano, got hurt. It's a late change, too. We were told what? 
about an hour before the game. That's right. So they tend to him. John Voigt. Three Army sacks in this game tonight. Good to see there for Trotman there getting up. He's helped off though and they'll tend to him on the sideline. A lot of times when you play these RPO spread type offenses, a lot of teams don't like to have pressure because that allows them to hit quick passes, hit seams, see what you're trying to do defensively. Jay Baven said, I don't like that. I want to bring pressure. I want to force you to make decisions quickly. You've seen that all night long. They've done a great job of taking the ball out of Chase Edmonds' hands. They've hit him. Whenever he wasn't carrying the ball, they've hit him. They've right. hit him. They've had two sacks over the top when he tried to, to block Alex Ackerman, and they've gotten pressure on Kevin Anderson, not allowing him to be comfortable in the pocket. Fordham needs to get it all the way out to the 35-yard line. They're 30 percent on third down tonight. Three out of ten. They need 17. Anderson throws tipped and intercepted. McClintock's got it. Taking it back inside of the 15, and Seaway took him down. Jalen McClintock off the deflection, the old tip drill. He gets it. Cole Christensen, 54, with the tip. Jay Bateman talked about him so much. He said he's a legit Division I player and offers from Temple, Marshall. You'll see Kevin Anderson step up in the pocket. He's got a receiver, C right, clears out, but Christensen gets the hand up, tips the ball. McClintock with the pick. 27 yards on the run back. New quarterback in the game for Army. On Bradshaw, out of the game. Kelvin Hopkins, his first snap, he gets it off, and Andy Davidson nearly took it in for the touchdown. I don't think Jeff Munkin thought with 10 minutes left in the third quarter he'd be able to bring in his backup quarterback and get him some experience. Nobody had any experience behind Ahmad Bradshaw. That's one of the really dangerous things for this Army team this year. Chris Carter out, Malik Magoo out for the year. Yes, both ineligible, unfortunately. John Schriffen talked about that at the beginning of the game. There's Hopkins under center. Hopkins gave it off, and Davidson takes it in for the Army touchdown. Short range, one yard, Andy Davidson adds to the Army lead, and Kevin Anderson and Fordham continue to see that hole get bigger and bigger early in the third. and do what he did at the beginning of the year last year, put the ball in the end zone, Army up. Big. Nine forty-one to play in the third quarter. Army with 44 on the board. Last year they averaged 30 points a game. They scored 60 or more three times. They're on top now, big here on Fordham. Down to John Schriffen for an injury update on Fordham sideline. John. Well, the Fordham's left guard, Jake Tratman, was helped off the field. The doctor immediately began looking at his left knee. They determined that his kneecap actually popped out and back in briefly, so they needed to take him into the locker room to get the big knee brace off to get a better look at it. He's going under uh, further examination. Uh, we'll give you an update if he's coming back or not later. Thanks, John. Certainly hope for the best for him and his family and his team. Some of the youngsters on hand to kick off the holiday weekend here along the banks of the Hudson River. The squad having their way with the visitors from the Bronx. James Nautical. 
want to remind you that Armed Forces football is proudly sponsored by USAA. Of all the things that Jeff Munkin's happy about, I'm going to tell you, the thing he's most happy about is special the special teams. teams. <laughs> because they were such an abysmal failure over the last two years, and they have been great tonight. Nick Schrag has kicked the ball really well. He's got three touchbacks. They only had one all year last year. Yeah. Coverage teams have been excellent. I guess Munkin just needs to keep not talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Which he does. He stays away from him. Like a relief pitcher in a way. Anderson took her on the run, no chance. Took a shot back there and slow to get up. It's been a tough night for Kevin Anderson, but you, know, you look at his numbers, 21 for 32, 205 yards. That's a big hit. Yeah, it's a lot is. of weight coming down on that shoulder. Just frustrated. Awesome kid, fun to be around, a great leader. The players love him. He rooms with Chase Edmonds. They're very close. One of the reasons Chase Edmonds stayed at Fordham is because of that relationship. Yeah. High nice snap, he gathered at Edmonds. Yet to see him break one. Jay Bateman, his defense, very good effort to this point. Christensen, the tackle. And I mean, that's been a big story defensively for Army. Their ability to stop Chase Edmonds. Only 30 yards rushing the ball. I'm stunned by that, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely, especially given what he did last time. I mean, 12 for 32 to this point. Third and five for Fordham. Anderson telling his roommate, go to this side of me. Anderson took a look, fired, tight end C right. Double team, they're gonna give him the 25. So, it'll be fourth and two. You know, when you're the tight end there, you have to know where the sticks are. You gotta get the first down. You're running just a little quick out. You break it off a yard and a half, two yards before the first down marker, and Army does a good job rallying the ball and getting a stop. John Trainer running back in the neighborhood of his 40. Nevis, three points, averaging 30.7. This isn't going to help that average. And a whole lot, it'll be down right at midfield on that Army crest. Short field for the Black Knights, already on top, 44-6 after a 25-yard punt. We'll be back after this. It's no eclipse, but it's a great looking shot here at West Point. 7.51 to go in the third. Army leading 44 to 6. And while we've got time, we want to remind you to and ask that you please help those affected by Hurricane Harvey. Visit redcross.org for more information. And when the team came on tonight, Army's team, for Daryl Davis, a product of Humble, Texas. He led the team out with that Texas flag, thinking of all those affected by Hurricane Harvey. And John Triffin's got more on that involving the Army staff here at West Point. John. Well, that's right. There are a number of players here on the team from not just Houston, but South Texas, also Louisiana. So Coach Munkin made sure to reach out to all those players and check in with them to see how their families are doing. He said the good news is that none of those players' families are in a shelter right now. But one player in particular, freshman running back Fred Cooper, Coach Munkin spoke with his mom. And the mom said that, yes, their car was flooded. They lost that. The good news is their house is dry in Houston, and they do have food. Now, in response, this Army equipment staff is doing a phenomenal job, led by Nick Dieterman. They are packing up socks, shirts, shorts, toiletries, anything that people may need in Houston. They're sending down about 10 boxes to make sure that people have some relief uh, down in Houston. Ben. Thanks, John. That's Fred Cooper, who John was referring to, just came off. And A lot of devastation down in that part of the country, Texas, Louisiana. Terrible to see the tragic events of what's happened down there. And so Calvin Hopkins in for the second straight series. It appears, Jay Feely, that Bradshaw's done for the night. Well, he's done enough. Yeah. And they need to get a backup reps. quarterback reps. He's got to get in there. Understand what it's like when the bullets are real and it's going fast and you have to process everything so quickly in this triple option attack. 
has put up 363 yards on the ground. Right back up the gut again. Connor Slomka, the ball carrier. Second straight carry for him. Bad shot with 177. Army record for quarterback rushing yards in a game. Trent Steelman had 212 against Eastern Michigan a few years ago. I thought it was interesting when we talked to Bradshaw that he says that he quizzes the young quarterbacks. That he'll grab them in practice and talk to them about what do you do here? What are you thinking here? Trying to help them in their maturation process. Sign of him maturing and becoming that leader we've talked about tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So Slomka getting an opportunity on this possession for the Black Knights. Elvin Hopkins, sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Probably a better passer than Bradshaw. That's what they were telling us. Clog it up here and get the first down to the five. It'll be first and goal. Hopkins kept it there and got it himself. Their plan was was to use him if they had the one or the two minute situation. Well, it wasn't this, right? No, but they'll take this a lot sure. more than the other situation. Sure. Yeah, this no is, question. If you're Army, this is exactly what you wanted. Your offense to play well, your defense and special teams to play well. An opportunity to get young guys experience and much needed reps, especially at that quarterback position where they have no experience backing up a my Bradshaw. And in this triple option, the quarterback, you take a lot of hits. Certainly do. Here's a toss. Trying to get it in the end zone. Up and in for the score. Taking it in is Fred Cooper. His first touchdown. As an Army Black Knight, a five-yard run. A 50 spot on the board from Munkins, guys, with 4.02 to play in the third. Well, you know it was a tough week for Fred Cooper and his family in Houston. Really happy that that could give them something to be happy and excited about after a tough week. Without question. Point after. Makes it 51 to 6 after the touchdown run by Cooper. The Houston native Cooper taking it around the corner, getting in the end zone, making his hometown proud. Four and change left in the third quarter. Army on top. 51 to 6 here in their season opener as they kick off 2017 on top of Fordham. Time now for this week's Where the Now brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Max Jenkins graduated West Point in 2012. He's currently a member of the United States Army Infantry. And he also helps out with the football team here at West Point. And he's also with John Schriffen. John. That's right. I am here with Max Jenkins. Max, that game back in 2011, it was your first start in the snow. What do you remember about that game? Uh, like you said, it, you know, I'll never forget it. Uh, getting to play out here with over a foot of snow and, you know, my mom and wife got to watch it be my first start and then get a big victory with everybody. It was, it was one to remember for sure. And what are you up to now these days? Uh, so I'm here as a director of player development. Um, Coach Monkin brought me back to help with everything off the field, academics, military, and professional. So get to mentor these guys and help them progress through their careers and after, after West Point. Now, if 
phenomenal season last year. What do you think about the start so far this year? Uh, well, 51 to six can't uh, can't ask for more, and just to be out here on the field and you know have all the hard work they put in this spring and this summer, and you know letting letting them see them have fun play out here. It's been great. Well, it's good to see you back on the sideline. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Ben. Thanks, John. And thanks to Max as well. Andrew Briner and his team just one touchdown in the game. A short run back in the first half by Chase Edmonds. Jay Bateman's defense. They were a confident bunch yesterday, and they've come out on the field tonight and shown that. They have shut down the best runner in the FCS at Edmonds here. He's trying to get free. I mean, he's got to work for every inch tonight, Jay. What amazed me was the confidence that Jay Bateman had yeah. in our meeting. Yeah. That they were going to shut him down. Yeah. The, a confidence that you and I didn't share with him. We, we thought it was going to be a much tougher job. <laughs> and Jay Bateman had a great plan, and his defense has executed it. Looks like Edmonds is holding his back there a little bit. He's taking some shots. That's it again. Another shot. And a short gain, about a yard and a half. On first down for Chase Edmonds. 63 rushing touchdowns in his career. 70 in total. His career average is 142 yards a game. He's nowhere near that tonight. Yet, if he gets it. Three to play in the third quarter. Anderson fires, catch made right there, waiting for him immediately. Stopped by Reynolds. By uh, Reynolds. Only success that Forum has had tonight is throwing the ball. They've thrown for just over 200 yards. Haven't been able to run the ball at all. Even with Chase Evans back, they're only 38 yards rushing for the entire game as a team. That's amazing. False start on the right guard. It is. False start. Offense. Number 79. Five yard penalty. Third down. So backs him up five. Only 99 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army Navy game, presented by USAA and CBS Sports. They beat Navy last year. They didn't beat Air Force. Now they want to beat them both. That's the goal, win the CIC Cup. Anderson, nowhere to go, dunk it off. Edmonds trying to get free, got a block. Still on his feet, yanked down. Ripped down, he's quickly back up onto his feet. Max Regan was over Regan there. It was close to being up high around the neck, that tackle, gain of 11. First down for Fordham. The 47. Quick look, throws far side. Grab made by Andrew Prince. Reynolds on the stop over there. He's played a lot tonight. We expected to see him a lot, according to Bateman. Jared Brevard is the running back as Edmonds not back in his normal spot for Fordham next to Anderson. of them are seniors. High snap, they get it down. Brevard breaks a tackle, still on his feet. Good run by him to take the football down to the 37-yard line of Army. Jake Ellington, the tackle again at 12. Had a lot of issues with snaps. They were going for it on fourth down early in the first quarter. Snapped it over Kevin Anderson's head. Chase Edmonds picked it up, but they didn't get the first down, turned the ball over on downs. Let's go. First down run results in very little, if anything. 
Army's defense has played exceptionally well tonight. Devard the carry. That's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Army up 51 to 6. That's the end of the third quarter with the score 51 6 Army. Great to have you with us tonight. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. moving pictures so far from the game. Thanks to the folks in our tape room for putting that together with Jay Feely, John Schiffen on the field. My name is Ben Holden as we get set to begin the fourth Jay. And what surprised you the most about this game? Well, what Jay Bateman has been able to do to contain Chase Edmonds, because I think he's a spectacular back that we will see play on Sundays. And Jay Bateman has contained him throughout the night. I mean, look at that. 16 touches, only 49 yards receiving. And he uh, rushing. He's done an unbelievable job. And his players have executed his plan spectacularly. Edmonds back in. He a breather on the last couple plays there on that series. Fourth is underway. Pass is caught by Cattle. Rory Cattle dropped. Anderson's pass complete to Cattle. James Nautical able to make the stop. Nautical There's that stop. crafty coach, Jay Bateman. Ball State before coming here to join Jeff Morgan's staff. Now in season four. Four on the pass. Third and five. Needing the 27 yard line to convert. Edmonds bounces it outside. That's our spot. Army wants Anderson him, the and they've done that all night. Set the edge. They've done it all night. Continue to set the edge, not allow Chase Edmonds to get outside. Where now his speed and his elusiveness can take over, force him back to help, and then relentless pursuit. That's what you've seen mm -hmm. from this Black, Knight, Black Knights defense. Jared Brevard back in for Andrew Briner's group at running back. They're two or three on fourth down. They need six, they need the 27. Saying it touched the ground. Reynolds has the football in his left hand, but they say no. Early on in this fourth quarter, Army gets it when we come back to Mikey after this. Early on in this fourth quarter, Army all over Fordham 51 to 6. That's Jay Bateman's defensive group there. And time now to check in with the the cow and our Chick-fil-A fan cam to see how the fans are reacting here at Mikey. If you're an Army fan, you're reacting, well, you're happy. Cora Cadets are always happy, and Army with a 51-point night. Third most they've scored in school history, and it's a lengthy one since 1991. First win for Army came back in 1891 against the team they're playing tonight. For them. Luke Langdon, the quarterback. Cool hand Luke's in there now. Luke Langdon gives it off, and it's handled by Kalen Holt. Product of Hawaii. Langdon, we saw him a little bit late in the season last year when. Bradshaw was dinged up. I think Carter was dinged up at one point, too, and Langdon was called upon. But to your point, man, this is good for them. Valuable experience for these quarterbacks. It takes so long to get comfortable in the triple option, and you really can't practice at the same speed and with the cutting and everything that it takes to understand this offense. Right up the gut again. This goes Kalen Hall. A lot of the starters out on the offensive line as well, so they're getting some valuable reps. 
Jesse Bramble made the tackle there on Kalen Holt. Jeff Monken told us that Kalen Holt has had a phenomenal camp. Yeah. You know, that he, he got a little nicked to injuries, wasn't sure if he was going to play a lot, but, you know, he loves what he sees from this young man. 30 yard gain on that run. Tonight's first down line being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. First and 10 Army from the 32 of Fordham. Toss play to Cooper. Cooper. Touchdown here tonight. First in his young career, his very first game. Put together well. John Schrift had talked about the opener. The offensive line issues. Yeah. Everybody was starting, but they were banged up. This is allowed in the second yeah, half. Dude. The backups have come in on that offensive line. They get some reps. They get some practice. But more importantly for Army, they get to rest those guys and not have them get any more injured. That's great points. Buffalo in here next Saturday at high noon. Another revenge game. Yeah, Army another lost to Buffalo last year in overtime. Yeah, I mean, you, you and I talked about it. Certainly that game, and then I mean, this was, this was in my eyes, a 10-win team last year. It, it should have been. Should have been. Should have been, yeah. yeah. Because, but that's why they play the game. They should have right. beat North Texas when they played them during the season and eight fumbles, and they definitely should have beat Buffalo. But if you're a head coach, you love the fact that the first two teams you're playing, yeah. after having a great year, are two teams you've lost to. Good and point. you can point to that and keep your guys focused all throughout camp. I like it. Langdon took a shot and got rid of it into the end zone. It's a touchdown for our Tice High. His first in an Army uniform, an 18-yard run, and Army continues to pile on the points. 57 on the board now. Bradshaw over there to congratulate the young man. David Cooper. Point after that one's blocked and goes into the end zone. So that ball is dead. That was a low line drive kick. That's about the only thing the special teams have done wrong tonight. The offensive line getting downfield, creating room, letting the freshman from Georgia get in the end zone. Man in the middle there. Runs this place, Lieutenant General Robert Caslin, former Army football player. And in the break, he was down there doing push ups. Look at that. You got to that. 50. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. He's in good shape, anyways. And Jeff Munkin went to him and said, There it is, Flex yeah. Force. That's <laughs> right, Army Strong. He was very instrumental, though. And and helping Jeff Munkin change the way that they do things in the football program here. Letting them change their training so they had more time to focus on football, but still do really the reason they're really here, the military training. So it's been a great relationship between Caslin and the football program. Re-kick here. Had many mistakes here, Jay. Team in the black uniforms. Blake Wilson getting a chance to kick off here. And Nick Schrag has done a good job all night. Looks like a new and improved Nick Schrag. Hopefully, that didn't jinx him. Wilson puts a leg into it. <laughs> yeah, the AP poll powered by Ram Trucks. Let's have some fun with this, That Jay. game right there between those two teams, Alabama, Florida State, everybody wants to see it. Alabama on their third offensive coordinator three in games. three games. And Lane, and Lane Kiffin today came out and said, <laughs> if I was still there, they would have won the national championship. Who do you like in that game? I like 
Alabama in that game, but I like Alabama and Florida State to get into the Final Four. I think the loser still gets, the winner of that game I think is in. They're gonna be in. Yeah. The loser I still think they can get back in. I agree. I'm gonna see both those teams at the end of the year. I'll take Florida State. We can agree on everything. <laughs> what we can agree on is that Army is balling tonight. Yes. So here's your top four, Feely. Well, there you go. I wasn't just saying it. I got Alabama, <laughs> Florida State. The Buckeyes, does that kill me to put that up there? I'm as a sure Michigan that man? is painting you. But they are a talent-laden team. Yes. And I think the Sooners, with Baker Mayfield, I think they come out and they get into the Final Four. A lot of really good teams in the Pac-12. I just think there's too many teams for any of them to get through unscathed. Yeah, that's a good point. If I had to pick one, I think I'd take Stanford. But we got Stanford in a couple weeks. We do. But when you look at all the great quarterbacks out there in the Pac-12, Darnold, Darnold, Rosen, Rosen Falk, Falk, Browning. Browning, the list keeps going yeah. on and on. I think they're going to beat up on each other, and I don't think you'll, you'll see one of those teams for the Pac-12 in the Final Four. Kevin Anderson's done. Luke Medlock is in at quarterback. He's a senior. And well in hand the flag flies, catch made, first down if the flag is not on Fordham. It was Corey Cattle with the grab out there. We'll check the marker from our referee, Mr. Overton, tonight. ACC crew. Penalty will be on Army. All sides, defense, number 25, five-yard penalty. Results in a first no down. To me, Ben, that's really the story of college football is just the quarterbacks. Yeah. They line up. Whoops. A little bit off sides. <laughs> Gotta have some awareness, but we're getting a lot of young guys some action. A lot of teaching points. to me is what's jumped out the most tonight. Well, we talked a little bit about they had to replace King and Tim, yep. guys that had together over 200 tackles. But the fact that the players replacing them might even be better yeah. athletes. Yep. They don't know the defense as well. Jay Bateman's got to continue to help them develop. But they have a lot of athletes, probably better than they've had in over 20 years defensively here. Indeed, the K is second and eight. Again, right to it. there who had seen his playing time go up late last year is going to play a lot this year. And those linebacker spots you were talking about with Jeremy King and Jeremy Tiff and Andrew King departing, graduating. King's still around the post though. We saw him yesterday. He doesn't want to leave. What's the play? of the intended target, Jonathan Lumley. Ends up fourth and seven. The punt team will come on. Andrew Briner, not a good night for his team. You know, and they were confident in their meetings. They felt they like they matched up well. They understood the triple option. They had experience defending it. Obviously, two years ago, they had come in here and had success offensively, but not the case tonight. Reynolds, fair catch made at the 32. 7.35 remaining in the fourth. When we come back, a story for Jeff Munkin and his football team. They'll remember forever that happened yesterday. We'll tell you about that when we come back. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chick-fil-A. Start game day strong with the new breakfast hash brown scramble bowl by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by MCOR, build, power, service, protect. 
Welcome back to Mikey Stadium as Army leads Fordham 57 to 6. Well, it's been eight long months, but the wait is over. That's because the bling is now in. Check this out. Army's bowl of victory rings from 2016, the heart of Dallas Bowl. They won the game in overtime over at North Texas. This is pretty sweet. You can take a look at this ring. One side will have the actual player or staff his name, the ring I have in my hand, actually belongs to Matt Faulkner. He takes such good care of us. On the other side, something all Army fans love to see, the brotherhood with the score of the Navy game when they beat Navy 2016, 21-17. Army certainly hopes to rack up more of these rings this year, guys. They do. Bling, bling, Shreff. Three o'clock and Jackson made the stop. Pass those out. Neat to see the players, the excitement for them. Tonight's first down line being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Gain of eight on first down. Coming up on seven minutes left in this one. Only with a 51 point lead. Luke Langdon there is in at quarterback. Matt Shaw had over 170 yards rushing. He's been out for most of the second half. Deploy the ball carrier. Ben, one of the changes that Jeff Munkin made this year was in preseason. He went away from the physical practices that are a staple of his. Over the first two weeks, they only had four, four contact practices, which is really hard for him to do. But when he'd done a study, over 50% of their injuries had occurred in preseason. They were trying to keep their guys fresh, limit the injuries. And I think if you look at the results today, it worked. It looks like it, yeah. And of course, with all the military obligations, their summer training and those things they have to do, and it's a lot. They're far from your normal or average college student here and at the other academies for that matter as well first down run that was tj wisham he's a freshman we asked the guys when we sat down wisham with them how much time you guys get off this summer and they kind of laughed no they said no I'm <laughs> and they went through their summer where they went was all the training they had to do yeah. soldiers first wisham again at 13 on that run and some of the guys lose 20, 30 pounds from the training they have sure, to go which through. Is, which is difficult. They talked about Andy Davidson. Yeah. You know how he wore down late in the year because he lost that weight, put it back on, but it's not the same kind of weight. And then you get an injury. They were talking about a hamstring, and it just it gets close, but it just doesn't have the strength. But it did. And it lingers throughout the season. It can. You're carrying around. 40 pounds on your back in a rucksack. And the dead of summer up in the woods at Camp Buckner, that's tough. It is, and that's why this big lead like this and the ability to play all your backups and even third string here in the second half, that's so important. It'll pay dividends four or five weeks down the road. With you on that, 100%. Two weeks from now, they play Ohio State. It'll, it'll In Seabus. <laughs> it'll be good to be healthy for that game. Yeah, no question. No question. Play clock down to three. They get the snap off. Toss to the right side. Blackbacks continue to just pile up the yardage. Funneling in back after back. Gain of 10 on that run. Fordham with over 70 plays. Army nowhere near that at this point. 14 different players have rushed the football for Army and Brent Davis's offense tonight so far. Right here on first down, right up the middle. Not much Boys, doing there for carry. McCoy. Give, give, give the coordinators and the coaches for this Army staff a lot of credit. No Brent question. Davis, their offensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, their defense coordinator. 
you know, even their special teams coordinator. You know, they've done a great job all night. You got to be confident moving forward if you're Army. They've executed a lot of guys that were stepping in, especially defensively, that hadn't played a lot, and they have executed almost flawlessly tonight. Second down and seven. Things that stood out to us was the size discrepancy between the defensive line for Fordham and the offensive line for Army. I think you see that play out time and time again. Offensive line being able to get downfield, four or five yards of push. Bradshaw, he didn't get touched. 40 yards downfield was the first time he got touched on that 71 yard touchdown. This offensive line has done a phenomenal job. They've asserted themselves, asserted their will, and they have certainly won the battle. Sandon McCoy, the carry there. Army has rushed for over 500 yards. 17th time they've done that. No passing yards. In pro, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> And they only averaged 74 passing yards a game last year. 501 on the ground. No intention of slowing it up here. In terms of running it. Second down. Langdon. Pitch. Got some space. Touchdown. Zach Bobis, the freshman out of Jefferson, Georgia, takes it in for the Army score. 12 yard run, it's 63 to six. A lot of smiles, a lot of happy faces. <laughs> a lot of guys getting their first opportunity out here and everybody delivering for Jeff Markman. So nine touchdowns scored by eight different players. Ron Bradshaw has to Abercrombie on. Does his job and it's 64 to 6. 125 remaining in this one. Army that far away from being officially 1-0. Oh. Minute 25 to go. The core cadets, we were away at commercial break there, and they announced that curfew was extended to 0100. The core was a little excited. Just a little that bit. That may have been the loudest cheer I've heard all night. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty loud. We revisit your extra points, Jay, and well, uh, they're other all, pan out. They're all in favor of Army, just like this game. Stop the fullback. Fordham didn't do it. Balanced offense, 11 yards rushing. That's unbelievable to me. Don't let Edmonds beat you. Jay Bateman did a masterful job containing one of the best running backs in the country and ball security. They lost the one fumble. Bradshaw did, but overall, just like the score, overwhelmingly, in favor of Army. Well, there's more college football coming up after us. After Army kicks it away, we'll tell you about that. The land of Lincoln, as they say, in the state of Illinois. this opportunity. I'm going to go get a stick in there. Like a young Jay Feely down <laughs> there. Right. That is right. There's more college football coming up next. As I mentioned, Boston College's defense led by the explosive Harold Landry look to stop the Huskies of Northern Illinois and DeKalb, Illinois to kick off the season for those two teams. Only on CBS Sports Network, Jason Horowitz, David Deal, and Eric Coleman on the call. A 9.32 kickoff for that one. There's Medlock. Here's the hit, Jay. 
Watch 99 come in there and <laughs> lay the wood. I love a young man. <laughs> That'll earn you some respect from the rest of that team. You want to earn respect as a young kicker, go down there and hit somebody. Inside of a minute remaining in the game. 64 to 6. Army in control. They've been in control all night. Start the season off 1 0. Brevard with a football across the 45. Here's the reacts on that tackle. There you go. They love it. Yeah. My son Jay's playing his first freshman game, playing for the varsity as a freshman. 30 seconds left. He went down there, hit the ball carrier, knocked it out. They won the game, got the fumble. I was more proud of him for the hit than I was the kicks that he made in the game. Where'd he learn that from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I know you did that. We love doing that. That's going to be the final play of the game. And good for Jace, too. He's a great young man. Army, victorious. They march in a big time way over Fordham. They start their season 1 0 to the Jeff Munkin led Black Knights. 63 points, third most in school history on opening night. And they handle Kevin Anderson, Chase Edmonds. They completely shut him down. 64 to 6. Scored 60 or more three times last season, and they begin this season with 64 on the board. We'll have the West Point alma mater for you, as we always do here at Mikey, once they're in position and ready. Moore is happy with that extended curfew. There's Edmund, still have better days, Jay. He had a day, he hasn't had many days like that in his college career at Fordham. No, but he won't face a defense as good as this Army defense the rest of the year. True. Time now for the singing, playing of the West Point alma mater. Chief Trophy, Mont Bradshaw, everybody happy here. They will be on post here tonight on the banks of the Hudson River. Jeff Munkin's guys, impressive tonight, to say the least. Offensively, defensively, on special teams, could not have started any better for Jeff Munkin and his entire team. He'll be joining John Schriffen. In fact, he's there through the magic of television. John, it's all yours. Coach, phenomenal performance by your offense, but really the story and the defense. You know, there were a lot of NFL scouts here, here to watch Chase Edmonds. How did you shut him down? I, I think they, the, the defensive coaches had a really good plan, number one, and our guys executed well against the run. And, uh, and that's a, a, a big point of emphasis for us. We want to run the ball effectively, be able to stop the ball, uh, stop the run effectively. And we did a pretty good job of that. I was really proud of the younger guys that came in. They did a good job continuing that uh, that success that we had the first half. You know, 
keep elevating the program. Two years ago, you lost to this Fordham team. Last year, you beat Navy, you win a bowl game. What are the expectations for this year's team after tonight's win? Just to get better, we need to improve. There's enough we didn't do right tonight that we'll have to fix and get corrected. We play Buffalo next week. So, you know, that's going to be the, the, the focus has got to be on that, on trying to get better. I'm really proud of our team. We made some really good plays. We made some mistakes that we'll correct. But, you know, as my good friend Terry Harvin used to say, 64 is more than six. So we're, we're happy to have a win. An impressive win. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks a lot. Ben. Thank you, John. Thanks to Jeff Munkin as well. Our final score, Army 64 to six. For Jay Feely, John Schiff, and our producer, Bruce Clark, our director, Warren Pick. My name is Ben Holden. And thanks for watching. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We now send it to New York inside college football with Dana Jacobson and the gang.